they didn't expect their holiday to end like this. About 600,000 tourists were stranded worldwide after British tour operator Thomas Cook suddenly collapsed on Monday. Pretty frustrated, to say the least. Annoyed. The UK has since sent dozens of planes to bring home more than 150,000 holidaymakers stuck in Europe and elsewhere. The airlift is the result of the British government's refusal to save the heavily indebted company and its wide-reaching business network. It ran hotels and airlines in 16 countries and served 19 million people a year. Thomas Cook offered trips to places like Mexico and Cuba. But most of the holidays it sold were to destinations on the Mediterranean. Here in Turkey's Dalaman region, about 60% of tourists are from the UK. And many of them booked through the British travel company. Those who are still here say they'll stick to tour operators despite the fallout. We flew with Thomas Cook last year and again this year. I mean, these things can't be helped. Um, it hasn't impacted me enough to say that I wouldn't come back with a tour operator. Hotels are worried about the knock-on effects of Thomas Cook's bankruptcy. But the Turkish government is offering some relief. Thomas Cook always brought a serious amount of tourists to Dalaman, therefore the collapse has a big impact on hotels like us who've been working with the company for 30 years. But immediately the next day after its bankruptcy, our tourism ministry and sector officials stepped in and informed us hoteliers about how to deal with the situation and help our guests so they return home happy. Other governments have also offered help. Germany has provided a $420 million loan to keep the company's Condor unit flying, while its Scandinavian arms are trying to stay afloat with the help of new investors. In Turkey, the tourism and finance ministries are planning a credit support package for businesses that lost guests Thomas Cook was supposed to bring in. It's also in talks with air carriers such as Turkish Airlines and EasyJet to provide extra flights to fill the gap. Even if Thomas Cook has left the market, we'll still grow the sector in 2020. Instead of focusing on worries, we'll try and find solutions. We've already started further steps. We will support players already in the market. We'll also make arrangements for new market players. And as the government encourages industry players to look for alternatives to traditional packaged offers, tourists are already doing so. I'd come back again next year. And in fact, I have inquired from the manager what it's... Uh, I'm not so good on the internet, but um, I was talking to her and she showed me how simple it was to book direct. So I may well consider doing that next year. Nearly half of this hotel's guests are returning clients. And while it may not be easy to fill Thomas Cook's shoes in a short time, growing demand shows that guests are likely to keep coming, with or without a tour operator. Sibel Karkus, TRT World, Marmaris. And for more on this, Heinrich Grossbongart joins us from Veliko Tarnovo in Bulgaria. He's an aviation industry expert. Welcome back to Money Talks, Heinrich. Now, how did a company that once had annual sales of more than $10 billion, 19 million customers a year, and 22,000 staff operating across 16 countries collapse in such a spectacular way? Yeah, hello. Thanks for having me. The um, cause is uh, actually multiple. Um, Thomas Cook was uh, financially weak uh, for many years. It has been uh, rescued by the banks in 2011, and it didn't uh, manage to get back on its feet. Actually, it was uh, burned by huge, huge debt, um, which made it almost impossible to earn decent money. The result, the, the reason behind it is that uh, Thomas Cook uh, never managed to update its uh, business model. Other than, uh, for example, German tour operator TUI, um, Thomas Cook very much relied on old fashioned brick and mortar uh, travel agents as a main distribution channel, which is much more uh, expensive than online booking. And I think that uh, um, together with the declining consumer confidence in the uh, Brexit, uh, pre-Brexit days, uh, it caused uh, the final collapse. Interesting. So it just really didn't keep up with the times. Now, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson said he refused to give Thomas Cook a near $200 million lifeline, saying that it would have created a dangerous precedent for uh, the corporate sector in the UK. Do you think the government should have stepped in to save Thomas Cook? 
No, I don't think so, because uh, um, Thomas Cook uh, actually was so much burned with debt and uh, has struggled to uh, provide uh, financially good results for a couple of years. So the, the business model is uh, not up to date and uh, there is no chance that uh, um, Thomas Cook would uh, be a profitable company uh, that would be able to repay that debt uh, without a major restructuring. So what's the main lesson that other travel companies around the world should learn from the collapse of Thomas Cook? In these days, um, travel agents, uh, travel companies uh, need to meet the demand of the customers more than ever. Uh, and the customers are looking for maximum agility. They are looking for online booking tools. Customers today decide on, on very short notice. It's many people uh, in the past uh, tended to book their summer holidays six, seven, eight months before a holiday. And today, uh, it's this, this time has, uh, has shortened to a couple of months. And that is something which, of course, impacts the, uh, the tour operators, the travel companies uh, that uh, have to, to, to take care of these, uh, this enormous flexibility. Sure does. Okay, Heinrich Grossbongart, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you.